A few months ago, I got hit with that itch. You know, that itch to start my umpteenth coding side project. Now, usually the way it goes is I get motivated to start a side project. I work on it for about a week just to inevitably abandon it, never seeing the light of day. But this time felt different. I felt much more determined that I would see this project out from start to finish and actually deploy a fully functioning piece of software. So I sat down at my desk, opened up my IDE, my terminal. I got my coding playlist ready and then nothing. I have this desire to code, to build something completely from the ground up. There is one issue though. I have no clue what I want to build. I've spent the last year learning a brand new technology and improving my coding skills. And all I want to do is put that knowledge to the test with a brand new project. I just can't figure out what I want to build. So naturally I stewed on it for a couple of weeks until one day I was doing a workout and in between sets, I was tracking my workouts through this app that I downloaded a long time ago before I got this notification. The subscription to this fitness tracking app that I was using was expiring soon. And I thought to myself, why should I continue paying $5 a month for this when I can just build it myself? And just like that, I had my idea to build a fitness tracking app. Now do a million of these already exist? Absolutely. Do I care? Not at all. And that's because the point isn't to build something original. The point is to just build something, something that I can really sink my teeth into and something that will satisfy that coding itch. So with the idea in mind, I got to work. A macro tracking app and a workout tracking app all baked into one. I'll call it state of health. It took me over 150 hours to code. And in this video, I'll take you through exactly how I went from a blank TS file to a fully functioning deployed project. So let's get started. Now, when building any large app, you need a plan. So I got to writing the problem that this software is solving, the tech stack necessary to make this software come to life. And then finally, the feature set outline, a macro tracking screen, a workout tracking screen, and then an authentication screen. I outlined each major screen of the application and all the sub features on each of these screens. Now, the reason why I documented each screen and feature like this was one, to give me a better understanding of how the application will function, but two, and most importantly, I needed to give this idea to a UI designer. Sure, I could have spent a couple of days creating a mediocre UI, but the reality is I would much rather focus all my energy on actual coding. So I went to Fiverr, found a designer, sent over the requirements, paid around 200 bucks. And within 24 hours, we had the designs and all the assets necessary for this application. And not gonna lie, they were better than anything that I could have made myself. Now the final UI won't look exactly like this. However, this gave me the overall look and feel for the project and a solid foundation to work with. With the UI designs in hand, I started to task out my work. I decided on the minimum features needed for me to have a functioning project that I would be comfortable enough to deploy to the public. And I then used Jira to write down each feature and task that I had to do for the project to chunk out my work into actionable tickets. The plan was really coming together and I was almost ready to start coding, but there was one more really important thing that I needed to do. I needed to build a website. So even though this is a mobile application, I need a website for one crucial reason a privacy policy. If I want any chance of my application making it through Apple's tedious review process, I'll need a privacy policy hosted on a valid website for it to be in compliance with Apple's terms of service. And aside from that, I think a nice landing page for this project would give it a very professional look and sort of add another level of legitimacy to the overall project. A URL that I could give out to potential employers or potential clients for them to easily get an idea of what the application does and what I'm capable of creating. Now to make this process 10 times easier so I could solely focus on coding the mobile app, I decided to use WordPress, which is a no code content management system to help me put this website together. And by using Hostinger, who is the sponsor of today's video, you're able to do this for extremely cheap. You can use my link hostinger.com slash Kenny to sign up for a limited time deal. Now, once you're at the Hostinger webpage, you're going to want to choose your plan. And this is where Hostinger really stands out. 
Because they offer longer term web hosting packages, they have insanely low pricing, which is honestly cheaper than any other hosting websites while still being very high quality. I've used platforms like GoDaddy in the past where I'm paying double if not triple for the same exact resources. For a simple website that is perfect for everything you need for a portfolio project, or in this case, an app landing page, you're only paying $2.99 for four years with an additional two months free. If you need more resources or you're hosting more content, maybe in the form of large assets such as videos, you could upgrade to the business package right here for literally only a dollar extra a month. And this is the package that I am using. It might even be worth getting this package from the get-go just because of how cheap it is, just in case you plan on doing anything extra with your website later down the road. Now, if these prices weren't cheap enough, after choosing your plan, you can scroll down to the bottom of the webpage and enter coupon code Kenny for an additional 20% off. Now, once you sign up with Hostinger, you'll be taken to this dashboard where we're able to set up our WordPress website. So we'll do that by going through the various prompts, setting up our WordPress admin account, selecting the type of website we want to build, from here, we can select a pre-built WordPress template, and I would recommend doing this if you haven't built anything with WordPress in the past, because this will give you a very solid foundation to work with. However, I'm just gonna create a blank website because I will be using a custom WordPress template of my own. I'll go through some of these additional prompts. I'll claim my free domain through Hostinger. So we'll do the state of health app.com after that i'll fill out this personal contact info from there i'll hit continue and then i'll simply let hostinger install the wordpress instance and it's really that simple in a matter of two minutes i was able to install wordpress and hook up my domain now with wordpress installed and my website hosted i designed the landing page using the wordpress ui tool and then added a privacy policy with the privacy policy live and the landing page completed i could finally get to the fun stuff actually coding the mobile app because I want this application to be cross-platform for Android and iOS, it makes the most sense to build this application using React Native. I set up the React Native project using a tool called Expo, which will make the deployment of this project way easier down the line. I added some linting rules, I installed some helpful libraries, I set up the folder structure for the project, and then I got to coding. It started by getting the root navigation set up by adding a nav bar with three placeholder screens for macro tracking, workout tracking, and an account screen. From there, I started to focus on the first major feature of the app, which was the daily macro tracking feature. I created the initial screen where users could add individual meals like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then I created the functionality to allow users to add food items to each meal by either creating their own food item or by selecting one from a pre-populated list. So I had the base UI and the flow set up for the macro tracking screen. However, there was one important thing missing, storage. For this app to serve any purpose, data needs to be persisted through some sort of storage. So using a library called async storage and Redux, I was able to write some code to save this data locally to device storage. So now when I close the app and reopen it, that data is indefinitely being persisted. However, this data is only being stored locally at the moment and not remotely. However, that's something that we'll get to later on. After setting up the storage, I added functionality like swipe to delete and toast notifications to help guide the user through the various processes of the app. Created this daily macro tracking pie graph module, added a way to set daily calorie targets, added functionality to track different days. So if I were to open this app tomorrow, I'd start with a completely fresh slate, added a way to view your previous day's logs, and then finally added a bar graph to visualize your weekly progress. So the macro tracking portion of the app was really coming together and I was super stoked with the progress made. However, I still didn't feel like it was good enough. See, in its current state, the only way users would be able to add food to their log would be by creating it manually, which would require them to know all the macros of the food that they were trying to track, or by selecting from a pre-constructed list that I made, consisting only of a handful of items. And I'm gonna lie, both of these options 
kind of suck. I thought it would be so much easier if a user could simply search for any food item that they wanted and added it to their daily log. Which brings me to my first large technical challenge that I faced when building this app. I needed an API that I could hit to query for any food item that I wanted. Meaning that if I had a banana for breakfast, I could simply search for a banana and then boom, add it to my log. So there were a few ways that I could go about this. One, I could create my own remote database and somehow manually fill it with hundreds of thousands of food records and then create my own API to query that database. Or two, I could just find an API that already does this. So in the spirit of saving time, I started looking for APIs that I could hit that have access to a large database of food. Now I quickly became discouraged when I realized that the first few APIs that I found would cost me a good chunk of change. But after some digging, I found a completely free API that I could use from the one and only US government. There's this API from the USDA that contains hundreds of thousands of branded food records and general nutrition facts for fruits, vegetables, and poultry. And as it turns out, it's completely free. Matter of fact, with an API key, my app is able to make 1,000 requests per hour per IP address. Meaning for every user using my app, they would be able to do 1,000 searches every single hour. So I generated the API key, hooked it up into my app, and then I coded the search functionality. And just like that, users are now able to search for generic produce items like fruits, vegetables, and meats, alongside hundreds of thousands of food items from various different companies, like this Amy's Pad Thai dish. And now that I was integrated with this API, I felt like this macro tracking feature was in a really good state, and I thought it was time to move on to the next big feature of the application, which was the daily workout tracking. Now, because I was creating reusable UI components when making the macro tracking feature, the workout tracking feature was a breeze. And here's the gist of how that functions. So each day you're able to add new exercises to your daily log. You can add exercises to your daily log by selecting this add exercise button here, which will allow you to select from a template of exercises or individual exercises. Now these exercises are pre-populated, but can be created by using this create exercise button right here. So if today was chest day at the gym, I could select bench press, and then this exercise would be added to my daily log. I can add an indefinite amount of sets using this sets button. I'd simply track each set of an exercise by typing the weight, the amount of reps that I did, and then clicking this checkbox to finish the set. And if I wanted to add another chest exercise to my daily log, I could simply search for chest exercises like this and add another one like so. I also coded some functionality to view a log of previously recorded workouts. And then I finally added another bar graph to indicate how many exercises that you've done over the past handful of weeks. It felt like the app was really coming together. And at this point, I was about 100 hours deep into the project and I was extremely happy with the progress that was being made. However, there was one last major feature to add and that is user authentication. User authentication would allow me to associate macros and workout logs to individual accounts and store that data on some sort of web server. Now to make this extremely easy, I decided to use Firebase for account management and account creation. Not only is Firebase dead simple to work with, it also gives me access to an entire backend suite of error tracking, analytics, and database storage. So I created my Firebase project coded up the registration UI, and then hooked up user authentication. So now that users were able to create an account, I added a couple more things to this account screen, such as user targets to allow users to change their target workouts per week. I also added user stats, and then a couple of account functions, such as account deletion, and a place for the privacy policy. And remember, the privacy policy is necessary to push the app to the Apple App Store. And now that the account screen was hooked up and account creation was completed, there was one final thing that I needed to do to mark this app as ready for release. I needed to code some functionality to sync user data to my Firebase database. So if someone ever deleted their app or downloaded it on a new device, they would have access to all of their previous records. And there are a couple ways that I could go about this. One, every time a logged in user performs an action, I could sync their data to you know, the web server. However, this could lead to the user doing hundreds of writes every day, which would just make my Firebase bill very expensive. 
And because I want to keep my costs as minimal as possible, I decided on a solution to sync user data once every 24 hours. So I spent a few days coding up this solution and before I knew it, the app was finally ready for release. Over one and a half months of coding, just to save $5 a month on fitness tracking apps. And the absolute last thing that I needed to do was deploy this app on the App Store. Now this process usually sucks, but because I'm using Expo, this was very straightforward. I read through some boring documentation, I set up my Expo build server, purchased an Apple developer account, added in some details for my app, and then submitted my build to the Apple App Store. And after 24 hours, I received the green light to deploy this app. I hit the button and there it was, live on the Apple App Store. And after a very long process, I had finally completed the side project from start to finish, from idea to deployment. Now this app is currently, as of making this video, live on the App Store for download. However, there's a good chance that in the next few months, I take it off the App Store so I don't have to keep paying for my developer account subscription. However, the code lives free indefinitely on my GitHub where you can download it and play around with it and you know use it for yourself. So check out the link in the description for the GitHub project and the source code. Now, while it seems like I coded this project without any headache, I promise you it wasn't as easy as I just made it seem. And there were a ton of nights where I was stuck on some weird bug or some weird functionality for hours. And honestly times where I completely wanted to give up. And I mean I fully expected this project to get zero users. But to be honest it was never about the users or making money. It was about accomplishing a personal goal to actually build something from start to finish and deploy it to the public. And I hope this video inspires you to do exactly that. To take that idea in your head and actually build that project out from start to finish and see it all the way through. Anyways, thank you all for watching the video and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.